Jerusalem's sake I will not rest unto the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Can we see our God? Can we see our God from the very beginning? From the mouth of the prophets. He's saying that I will not rest. I will not. I, I, I don't know if we I don't know if you get the gravity of this statement. I will not rest. I will not rest until there is salvation for mankind. Until man has become one with me. Until man is in Christ, I will not rest. Do we see the heart of God in this statement here? He said for Zion, said, I will not rest. I will not rest. Oh Jesus, let's open our Bibles to John. The book of John, chapter 1. John, chapter 1. Reading from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. Uh, let's make a pause here. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, right? That word there is Logos, which is the intention of uh, God. It said that, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the same was in the beginning with God. This intention has been in the heart of God from the very beginning, right? Okay. And the Bible says that without Him, Nothing was made that was made. That means that all of creation was because of this intention. All of creation was based on this intention. Without him, nothing was made that was made. The very, the very essence of creation is for salvation. The very reason for creation, the very purpose for creation, the very uh, production of our creation is for salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in him was life, right? Let's keep reading. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is God's intention. It has been from the beginning. From the beginning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, okay, yes. Uh, let's keep going. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own and received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. Okay, hallelujah. The point I'm trying to make here is that uh, the Bible says that the word became flesh, right? And dwelt among men, right? This very intention of God. It was so it was so massive that God had to make that intention a person. And the person came down to the earth, right? Hallelujah. Okay, let's um let's go uh, to the book of Second Peter. Peter chapter 3 verse 9 it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise and so as some men count slackness but his long up towards to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come into repentance hallelujah this has been God's will from the very beginning it has never been God's will that any man should perish it has always been his will that everyone should come to repentance hallelujah Hallelujah. Let's uh, open our Bibles quickly to 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. Let's read quickly. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou unto faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Hallelujah. This statement always hits me hard every time I look at it. You see, no, no matter how hard your labor is, if you are not laboring according to the rules, there is no reward for you. I'm so sorry, the scriptures that said so. So, this is the reason why we submit ourselves to the training of the Spirit, to this uh, rigorous training, as rigorous as it might be. We submit ourselves to this because we know that uh, this is our purpose. This is God's intention for man. And we have found ourselves in it and we have become emissaries now. We are the instrument by which God will make his intention known to the whole world. And we continue in this. We are strong in it. The Bible says we should endure hardness as good soldiers of Christ. Hallelujah. No man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this world. In uh, the teaching of career in God, pastor said two things that I will never forget in my life. He said, number one, a man that has a career in God, God will fall in love with sacrifice. That is one. Number two, a man with a career in God will deliberately lose test for excellence in some other things in life. It's a deliberate thing. It's not something that will fall upon you. You will choose it by yourself. Hallelujah. The scripture said here that no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of his life. Hallelujah. This is our purpose. This is what we have chosen. And we stay strong in this. Paul was speaking to Timothy. He said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We are strong in this. We are not wavering. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voice and just sing in the Holy Ghost for a while. God has a plan and a purpose for man. It's called salvation and the things it entails. We have begun to stay on this path.
Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 10 and 11. It says, To the intents that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Hallelujah. To the intents that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might, know, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Why does the church exist? So that we will show forth God's manifold wisdom, right? We have to show forth God's wisdom. Hallelujah. And we know that God's wisdom is in salvation. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it a manifold wisdom. It's a multifaceted wisdom. Who will just believe that? You, you just believe one gospel, something that somebody told you. And all at once, you have the spirit of God. You are righteous. You are sanctified. You are justified. You have power to heal the sick, raise the dead. You speak with tongues, you know? All of that, just in, in a nanosecond. It's a multifaceted wisdom. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 2. from verse 1. It says, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with the excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I have determined not to know anything among you, save Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be to speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, not of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Hallelujah. We study in the context of this, what, uh, what has Paul said from the beginning. He said, I, I seek to know nothing among you, save Christ and him crucified. That is what he has been preaching. And then he says, this is the wisdom of God that we preach. You know, to the princes of God, uh, to the princes of the world, this is a mystery. So we understand that Christ is the wisdom of God. So when we have been called as a church to show forth God's manifold wisdom, who are we showing? We are showing Christ to the world. Hallelujah. We are showing Christ. This is the reason why we exist. This is our purpose. We do not. We are not a church if we are not showing Christ. Hallelujah. For whatever reason we gather. Uh, Pastor John we was saying, I think that was on Tuesday, that it is the purpose for your gathering that will tell whether you are uh, whether you are a church indeed. Hallelujah. Our purpose as a church is to show for God's manifold wisdom, and we are strong in this. Hallelujah. Let's look at Ephesians 4 finally. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 11. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Okay, quickly, let's look at Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1, verse 28 and 29. Whom we preach, okay, let's start from 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory, of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working worketh in me mightily. Hallelujah. The message version says we preach Christ, wanting anybody not to add to the message. We speak in a spirit of profound common sense to bring everybody to maturity. To be mature is to be basic. Christ no more, no less. I love that statement to me. He said, to be mature is to be basic. Christ no more, no less. This is what we preach. This is where we stand. This is our purpose. So when we say we have one destiny, we know what that destiny is. When we say we have one purpose, we know what that one purpose is. We are not divided in our minds. We are of one mind. We are of one spirit because there is one purpose that we have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that purpose is to preach the gospel to the world, to make Jesus know. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. we have one destiny. We have one purpose. We have one passion in God.
your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We stand perfect in God's will. We stand perfect in His will. We have found faithful stewards. We are faithful stewards. These things we have learned, we will commit them unto faithful men who are able to teach others. <laughs> Your voice and grain tongues. Let us show the mountains. Let the hills be lifted up. Let the mountains be lifted up. Let's go, 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 let's go